If you have decided to become a pilot, I think the first thought that comes into your head is what region to acquire your license from. Sounds confusing? The point is that each country's government issues their own type of version of pilot certificates, despite that aviation is a worldwide business that has no boundaries. For instance, each country's CPL certificate is similar to each other's, considering requirements for the training program. But often, different countries do not recognize the foreign certificates as an equal type. To not confuse you anymore, let's start from the beginning. The main civil aviation law holder is organization called ICAO. What does it hide under its abbreviation? It is International Civil Aviation Organization, a specialized agency of the United Nations. Its activities include codifying international air navigation principles and techniques, fostering the planning and development of international air transport to ensure safe and orderly growth. In addition to that, the ICAO defines the protocols for air accident investigation followed by transport safety authorities in countries signatory to the Convention of International Civil Aviation, commonly known as the Chicago Convention. There are 191 ICAO members. ICAO regulations are used as a main law in all regions and slightly adapted according to that market needs. Some countries have joined and established their own organization, GAA, IASA, and FAA. FAA and GAA IASA are the best known of them. Other countries' organizations and their own regulations mean that they didn't join one of those bigger associations. So what to choose? American FAA or the European IASA certificate? Or a combination of both? Or maybe you will go with certificates from Canada, Russia, or one of the African or Middle East countries? Remember, a choice of license depends on where you want to fly in your future. Let's start with the United States. The FAA uses a modular approach to pilot certification. In simpler words, system is based on a building block approach as each level of pilot certificate builds upon the knowledge and experience gained at the previous level. The additional emphasis is put on practical testing. Training for FAA pilot certificates and ratings may be acquired in three ways. First, through an individual training program with an FAA certified flight instructor. Second, through an FAA approved training curriculum at the certified FAA pilot school or training center. Third, is through an FAA approved air carrier training program and required checking. Do not forget that in order to hold a pilot's license, you will need to pass a regular medical exam. Technically, you can't start your training without doing the medical exam, as long as you pass the exam before a certain stage of the training. However, I strongly recommend you to get the medical exam out of the way right up front. If there is any medical reason that you can't fly, you may as well know it before you spend a bunch of money on flight training. The pilot medical exam is more focused on the health issues as heart attacks or strokes that can suddenly incapacitate a pilot. The most common reasons for not passing the medical exams are high blood pressure, diabetes, epilepsy, suicidal tendencies, and other. Your family doctor is not the one who will conduct your pilot medical exam. This testing can only be conducted by a doctor specifically qualified for this particular procedure. There are three kinds of medical classes in FAA region. Third class medical certificate is necessary to exercise the privileges of a private pilot license or certificate. You can also exercise the privileges of a recreational pilot certificate, student pilot certificate, or flight instructor certificate with this medical certification. Second class medical certificate is for a commercial pilot license. And last but not least, First class medical certificate is to exercise the privileges of an airline transport pilot license. So basically, here are pros and cons of FAA license. Pros. Possible to accomplish in quite a short period of time. One of the lowest prices. 
recognized in a lot of other countries than FAA, as few other countries are following their regulations. Cons Very difficult to convert to European license. Not recognized in Europe and other regions where IASA regulations are followed. Demand of higher paid jobs for pilots with experience. Let's move across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe. If you plan to fly in this continent, no matter what you do, you will need to pass all airline transport pilot license exams according to European Aviation Safety Agency requirements for flight crew licensing, shortly called Part FCL. The Part FCL has two training systems for acquiring licenses and ratings. Integrated training, which is aimed to train ab initio or existing license holders for airline flying or other types of flying, or modular training, or in other words, step-by-step -step program aimed to train existing license holders on modular courses for airline flying or other types of flying. In both cases, the license and rating standards are at the same level. A person studying for a Part FCL professional license must receive training at an approved training organization. This is mandatory for integrated, modular, private license courses, although the last mentioned can be carried out at the registered facility, for example, flying clubs. Under the IASA licensing system, the integrated ATPL program prepares the pilot for direct entry into multi-pilot airplane, including commercial pilot license, multi-engine instrumental rating, multi-crew cooperation course, and ATPL theoretical knowledge. The ATPL license is issued after meeting stated requirements. An individual may achieve the same qualification by going through modular training programs. There seems to be a lot of quirks in the choice of either the integrated or the modular way. Choose what suits you best. To be more reasoned, it is better to list up pros and cons comparing those programs. We have prepared pros and cons from our point of view, but remember, yours may not look the same the way you see it. ATPL Integrated Pros Easier overview of education plan Often, this way license is acquired quicker. CPL Modular Pros Cost spread over time More hours in the logbook Education can fit your daily life. Possibility to take a step at a time. ATPL integrated cons. Larger cost up front. Less hours in the logbook. Daily life have to fit education. CPL modular cons. Difficult overview of education plan. Often, this way takes more time. There are two classes of medical certificates and any pilot must hold a valid medical certificate adequate to the requirements of the desirable or the current license. A class 1 medical certificate is required for all pilots who fly commercially and hold an ATPL or CPL license. A class 2 medical certificate is for private pilots. So basically, here are pros and cons of EASA license. Pros. Recognized in a lot of other countries than IASA, as few other countries are following their regulations. The conversion of IASA license is easier than others. Cons? Takes quite more time to get the license. More expensive education. Without conversion, license is not recognized in FAA region and other regions who works under FAA regulations. I have presented main associations but I will shortly provide basic information about other specific bigger countries and associations. Canada is controlled by an organization called Transport Canada. Air regulations are determined in the Canadian Aviation Regulations, which are a compilation of regulatory requirements designed to enhance safety and the competitiveness of the Canadian aviation industry. In Canada, there are four types of pilot licenses that you can hold. One of them is Recreational Pilot Permit, which allows you to fly with your friends and family for fun and transportation and is valid only in Canada. Private Pilot License gives the same possibilities, only it is accepted all over the world. 
Commercial and airline transport pilot licenses enable you to fly for a living and pursue career in aviation. The only difference is that with ATPL license you have opportunity to become a captain. Your very first pilot's license have to be either a recreational pilot permit or a private pilot's license. The latter can be upgraded with experience and additional training to a commercial pilot's license and then with more experience and even more training to an airline transport pilot's license. Pros Less expensive education You can choose the speed of getting a license Easier to convert to FAA Due to distance, easier to gain hours Cons more difficult to convert to IASA, less recognizable. Latin America has their own specific requirements, but core regulations are based on FAA standards. Middle East is similar to Latin America. However, at the moment the process is changing a bit, as some countries are turning to IASA regulations. Africa is a specific region because it is still developing and now each country is choosing which path to follow. India is more specific region. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation is the Indian governmental regulatory body for civil aviation under the Ministry of Civil Aviation. This directorate investigates aviation accidents and incidents. There are three stages of getting a license in India. The student's pilot license is the first stage of training. SPLs are issued by 23 flying clubs in India. You have to pass written examination which tests basic mathematics knowledge, engines and aerodynamics. There is no age limit to acquiring an SPL. The second stage, the private pilot license, comprises 60 hours of flying, consisting of 40 hours flying with instructor and 20 solo hours. Along with flying training, you also have to complete a theory curriculum and pass a written examination. This course generally takes two years to complete and makes you eligible for the PPL. For the third stage, the commercial pilot license, a minimum of 250 hours of flying, including 60 hours of PPL, is necessary. To get a CPL, you need to have the experience of 200 hours of solo flying. In addition, you have to pass a written examination. Further, you have to undergo a medical fitness test conducted by a team of doctors approved by the DGCA and the Central Medical Establishment of the Air Force Unit. The average period of training for a commercial pilot is one year. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority is the Australian National Aviation Authority the government's statutory authority responsible for the regulations of civil aviation. CASA's primary function is to conduct the safety regulation of civil air operations in Australia and the operation of Australian aircraft overseas. It is also required to provide comprehensive safety education and training programs. Russian market situation is a bit different than anywhere else. The country is very close considering its pilot training. In Russia, there are only a few training centers where pilots may get pilot license. And that is not the only problem. These training centers test pilots according to the astronaut requirements. So all the medical criterion for pilots are made according to the criteria for astronauts. Plus, there are some other requirements that pilots must fulfill. Have higher aviation or technical education. Be of Russian nationality and have Russian passport. Be younger than 35 years old. Hold military card A category that meets the requirements of Russian military. If you don't fulfill these requirements, then you can't become a pilot in Russia. I hope now it is clear for you how aviation industry works in different regions. If you have any questions, or need additional information, please do not hesitate to email us at info at See you soon!